anybody who will take a stand against oppression has to be considered a warrior. The idea of black men being warriors or distinguished soldiers or fighting men is always played down. To <laughs> These blocks must not be fake. If these blocks are fake, you will get hurt. One more time, now take them to sweep. The names mentioned to blacks are inevitably so-called men of peace. But you don't hear of Nat Turner, or Denmark Vesey, or Chaka Zulu, or Malcolm X. Because these people say black man. Win back the esteem of your black woman and be a man, stand up, win back not only esteem of your women, but let the people throughout the world know that you're a, a man. And that you have some power and some majesty, personally. A man, in the true sense of the word, M-A-N, defends himself. I feel that every person that comes to karate brings a specific part of himself to the art. Is it? Yes. I had been very seriously injured in 1957. I was almost burned to death. I sustained approximately 40% third degree burns over my body. I had approximately 12 operations and I was given up for dead four times. I was saved from death for a specific purpose. I came to karate because I believe that my major contribution can be the uplift, the helping of black people to find confidence in themselves. Since slavery, this society has tried to destroy the black family. One of our priorities is to solidify the father-child relationship. We must fully reclaim our manhood. Karate, one of more than 15 martial arts, develops along with physical abilities, the qualities of manhood. The martial arts, in the sense that it restores a psychological balance to an emasculated black male. It gives him a, a feeling of intrinsic personal power. It gives him a feeling that he knows now that he's a man, that he's not insecure, that he's not frustrated. And he can direct his energy then, since he doesn't have to make the fight for masculinity every day, he can direct his energy to more useful pursuits. Very fortunate tonight happened with us. Mr. Toyotaro Miyazaki. Mr. Miyazaki is probably the finest kata, in, without a doubt, is the finest kata exponent in the United States. First, I'd like to give you how Mr. O'Connor wants kata done. Karate can be anything to you you want it can be. It can be the total experience of your whole life. The people in my dojo are going to be different from any other dojo anywhere except in the black community. Because in the first place, they have come through a youth whereby from the age of maybe six or seven years old up, they are the most sophisticated children on earth. They've learned to survive in a, a savage and almost unbelievable world. Uh, karate, per se, when I say survival, is 
a black woman coming home late at night and some idiot happens to grab her or jump her or molest her. We can see that she reduces him to jelly. Uh, some kid who two or three toughs in the schoolyard want to beat up because he may be small in size or stature or uh, apparently weak. This, in a sense, is also survival. Sensei Hamilton, sensei, a Japanese word for teacher, maintains his ties visually with Japan and with African America by displaying the Shotokan patch, which indicates his style of karate on the right arm and the black liberation flag on the left arm. Sensei Hamilton views ferocity as a positive force and uses this to underscore the basic purpose of karate, that of self-defense. I find that ferocity is an innate trait of almost every individual under pressure. And I, if you don't think there's any ferocity in the black communities, the only reason for the ferocity among blacks is because black men are so frustrated that you'll find that the most murders among blacks are against other blacks because the law enforcement agencies in this country don't attach any particular penalty to one black killing another. But the whole massive retaliatory mechanisms of the white establishment comes down on you if you kill one of them. Now, isn't it a fact that despite all this ferocity among blacks, no white man in this country, in the history of this country, has ever been executed for killing a black man or woman? but thousands upon thousands upon thousands of blacks have either been lynched or murdered, illegal or illegal, according to which way you figure the law out for killing whites. So consequently, you see that the ferocity that, whites ha that blacks have has been carefully and chronologically challenged into a, into a mainstream where blacks' ferocity is directed against other blacks because the penalties attached by white society to attacking them are so massive and overpowering. This punch must be ultimate destruction. The punch must be delivered from here. Here, this is the power shot. This is where you kill him, right here. You kill him with this, you understand? Do you understand me? I understand! You got to knock it down. That is easy. Kumite, or free fighting, is the epitome of the physical training of karate. The courage, character, and personal commitment that have been achieved are put to the ultimate test during this physical act of self-defensive maneuvering. Sensei Hamilton's feelings about black womanhood are very strong. He insists they wear a shield to protect their vital organs and thus their womanhood. Sensei Hamilton is committed to curing the pathologies of the black community. We asked him to describe some of the social ills he must help his students to control. Dope addiction in this country, 50% of it, 50% of it is centered in the city of New York. Police forces, the police of the city of New York are approximately 30 to 34,000. The next largest police force in the country is Chicago, 10,000. So New York's police force is almost triple that of any other city in the country, number one. Number two, despite that fact, 
junkies, dope addicts, and related crimes approximate approximately 70% of the crime in this country. 400 police are on narcotics. Now, if 70% of the crime is committed in this country by dope addicts and dope-related crimes, including pushes, then why in the name of heaven are it 70, 50, at least 50 or 60% of the police force committed to the eradication of this crime? Now, luckily enough, the martial arts is one area where kids who have been under the aegis of a good instructor, for some reason or other, do not gravitate toward dope. Thank God. American veteran. I have five battle stars. I have an honorable discharge. I am not or ever have been the member of the Communist Party or any listed American organization or any foreign organization that advocates the overthrow of this government. The only thing that I can say is that my commitment to this country and to my people is total in the extreme to the point where I believe that we must extirpate the pathologies, the sickness, the polarization that governs this country. And I'm not prepared to do it in Africa. I'm not going to let anybody send me back to Africa because before I go back to Africa, my point of origin, you must take the Lithuanians back to Lithuania, the Germans back to Germany, the Chinese back to China, the Japs back to Japan, the Italians back to Italy, and give this country back to the Indians, and then you tell me where I have to go. I'm a first generation American. My folks have been here for almost three to 400 years. They were brought here under fourth draft against their will, and somebody whose parents are immigrants and just came here 15 to 20 years ago is going to tell me where I can go? No, indeed. From time to time, people, we've been asked a lot of questions. Now, these are the questions I want you to remember. The karate to you means only one thing. You have to survive. Now, to survive in this dojo, people, means to stay alive. So, if it comes to saving your life, you must be the winner. I have to take this home with me. If I don't work you hard, if I don't train you properly, then I have the obligation. I cannot sleep at night knowing I might be the person who contributed, contributed to getting you killed. This is a jungle right outside this door. There are dope pushers, prostitutes, murderers, bullies, rapists, everything you can think of right outside that door that you go out of every night, every day of your life. If you're not tougher and stronger than the person you meet out there, you will wind up dead. I want to know that if you went down, you went down fighting. If I ever come up on you, and I hear that you're a coward. I'm going to be very disappointed in you. If I come up on any of you and I find a needle in your arm or dope, or I find you selling dope to get rich, I'm going to be disappointed. I want to know that from you to you and everyone in my dojo that you had every chance in life and you worked very hard to get everything that you got so that you understand me. I am not your friend or anybody's friend in here. This is a hard, lonesome, miserable job. But psychologically, I'm prepared for it. I'm a miserable, mean, honorary, cantankerous, miserable old man. That's exactly what I am. I don't ever intend to change. None of you can change me. You can go out someday and you'll wonder why I've been this way. But I know what it takes to survive. You must survive. You simply must. You're the only hope we have left in this country. You must survive. You simply must. You're the only hope we have left in this country.